Now, it's a trio of exhibitions linked by a common theme. William Burroughs, Andy Warhol and David Lynch were all hugely influential in their fields, but they've never been celebrated for their photography until now. Tomorrow, London's Photographers' Gallery will show off the view from behind their stills cameras, and Katie Razzle went along to see what insights the photos offer on their better-known work. Cameras are such incredible machines. It's just magical. Everybody's had this thrill of taking a photo. It's a side to David Lynch and two other countercultural titans rarely seen before. The cult novelist, the film director and the pop artist as photographers. David Lynch is attracted to these kind of places because they have a certain mood. Petra Gilloy Hertz persuaded the film director to let her go through his photographs of derelict factories dating back 30 years. It's the first time they've been shown in Europe. He has really an obsession, a childlike enthusiasm, and he loves these places and he is looking, I think, all the time for magical places in his movies as well as in his photographs. Seeing all the films again, it really uh, gives you some enlightenment. You recognize places again and you find this kind of mood here as well as there. So all this fringe land, this wasteland, the kind of strange magical atmosphere, the flickering light, the steam, the dust, the fog, all this you find in these images. In contrast to Lynch's moody, stylized pictures, on another floor of London's Photographer's Gallery is the William Burroughs show called Taking Shots. I want something to shoot! <laughs> A pun on the life of the gun-toting, heroin-addicted author of Naked Lunch and other cult books who took thousands of pictures. take a lot of photographs of different people and tear pictures out of papers you know, and build literally dossiers on, on, you know, out, out of which his characters would come. Barry Miles met Burroughs in London in the 70s. His young self stares out, alongside Burroughs' beat generation friends Alan Ginsberg and Jack Kerouac. So yeah, tell us about this. Uh, well, this is Bill at his possibly most eccentric or extreme. Uh, he believed very much in the power of uh, photos and... and uh, and tape recordings to disrupt the, the time-space continuum. And this was a coffee bar on Frith Street that, uh, where he uh, encountered uh, tremendous discourtesy and, uh, and, as he put it, poisonous cheesecake. And he decided he was going to close them down. And so every day he would go and take photographs of them. And in the end, their, their time-space continuum got so mixed up that uh, the customers fell off and uh, the place closed down. I mean, did he really and, believe that he caused that? Oh, he did, very much. And he... Um, he was particularly pleased since um, being gay and an old queen. Uh, when it reopened, it was called the Queen Snack Bar. Burroughs is famous for the cut-up technique, copied by the likes of David Bowie. I'm an alligator. I'm a mama, papa coming for you. I'm a it's a way of finding new meaning Burroughs used in photography too. These kind of images are a very good example of him slicing um, portraits in half. It, it's always a way of trying to make things fresh and new. The third in this gallery trio, Andy Warhol. The pop artist took up to three rolls of film a day for the last decade of his life. The condiments, celebrities and repeated patterns we know him for are in these images too. But when he spotted a new compact camera at the home of a Swiss collector in the 70s, he started photographing anything that caught his eye. He said, oh, that's like a James Bond camera. Will you give it to me? You know, and they, they said no, so they had to make a direct stop very, very quickly in order to, to buy him this camera that he so desperately wanted. Warhol, Lynch, Burroughs. The view through their lenses tells us more about who they are. Katie Razzle and the exhibition, which starts tomorrow at the Photographer's Gallery, runs until the end of March.